Welcome to our lecture online. This problem is also not that bad of a problem. It's actually relatively easy and it can be done relatively quickly. It will take more than 30 seconds or so, but stay tuned and we'll see how things can turn out. We're dealing with simple harmonic motion, although in this particular case it may not be simple harmonic motion. Let's read. On a frictionless horizontal plane, a bob of mass 0.1 kilogram is attached to a spring with natural length L equals 0.1 meters. The spring constant is K1, 0.009 newtons per meter, when the length of the spring is greater than L sub naught, and K2 is 0 0.0016, 0 0.016 newtons per meter, when L is smaller than L sub naught. So the spring constant is different depending upon if it's elongated or compressed. Initially, the bob is released from L equals 0.15 meters. Assume that Hooke's law remains valid throughout the motion. If the time period of one full oscillation is described as t equals n times pi seconds, then the energy closer to n is. So essentially what they're asking us is to find the period of oscillation but we have two different, two different uh, spring constants, so we'll have two different frequencies. And how do we deal with that? Well, we can kind of cut the thing by its in two, right? You can kind of take a look at it like this. And when, let's see here, when the spring is longer than L sub naught, then let's see, longer like this, then the spring constant is K1. So on this side, the spring constant is K1. When it's compressed, on this side, it's K2. So essentially, what we can do, since they tell us that it's following Hooke's law, which means that the extent of the elongation beyond the equilibrium point doesn't really matter. The frequency is independent of how long the oscillation or how, what the amplitude of the oscillation is. So therefore, we can say that the total period for a whole oscillation is equal to the period uh, for the oscillation when we use K1, of course, we only take half that period, and then we add that to the other half of the period when we have a different constant uh, for the spring, a different spring constant. All right, so then what we can do is we can do as follows. We can use for T1, we realize, of course, that F1 equals 1 over T1, or T1 equals 1 over F1. And then we also know that uh, omega 1, the angular frequency, is equal to 2 pi f1. And then we also should know that omega 1, the angular frequency, is equal to the square root of k1 divided by the mass. So in this case, that's equal to k1, which is 0 0.009 divided by m, which is 0 0.1. So this is equal to the square root of 0 0.09, which is equal to, uh, let's see here, uh, which is equal to 0 0.3? Yes, it is. Because 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.09. So that, that is it. So this is equal to omega 1. So now we kind of work our way backwards, right? So we say that T1 is equal to 1 over F1, which is equal to 1 uh, which is equal to uh, 2 pi over omega 1. Right, so if we replace F1, so we can say F1 is equal to omega 1 over 2 pi. Ha, huh? I'm glad I quickly did that because otherwise I would have gotten this wrong. So it's always better to work things out because our brain doesn't always work right if we try to do it in our head. So here we have omega 1 divided by 2 pi. That makes more sense because omega 1 is bigger than F1. But it's on the denominator, so I did do it right. All right, back up. All right, so F1 is going to be omega 1 divided by 2 pi. So I had it correct in the first place because F1 is in the denominator. All right, so that's T1. Divide by 2, that means T1 divided by 2, that's equal to pi over omega 1. And of course, omega 1 is 0.3, so this is equal to pi over 0 0.3, and multiply both the top and the bottom by 10 to get rid of the decimal, that's equal to 10 pi divided by 3. So that's T1. We do the same for T2. So we have omega 2 is equal to uh, the square root of k2 over the mass, which is equal to the square root of 0 0.016 divided by 
0 0.1 and so that would be omega 2 is equal to the square root of 0 0.16 which is equal to 0 0.4 alright so that's our omega 2 so that means that T2 which is equal to 1 over F2 which is equal to 2 pi over omega 2 which is equal to 2 pi over 0 0.4 Again, multiply both the top and the bottom by 10. We can say that's equal to 20 pi over 4. Ah, maybe we can say it's 10 pi over 2. So T2 is equal to 10 pi over 2. But of course, we want half of that. So we want divide by 2, so we divide by 2, and so we have 10 pi over 4, or 5 pi over 2, when we divide both sides by 2. Alright, so now we need to add the two together, so the total period is equal to T1 over 2, which is right here, 10 pi over 3, plus T2 over 2, which is 5 pi over 2, and now of course the common denominator would be 6, so then we have t is equal to 20 pi divided by 6 plus 15 pi divided by 6. And let's see here, what, the, what are we actually going for? We have n pi right here, so in this case that would be equal to 35 pi over 6. And 35 divided by 6, it's almost like 36 divided by 6, that is almost equal to 6 pi. And we're looking for the nearest integer, so therefore I would conclude that the nearest integer is a 6. And that would then be the answer to that particular problem. So, again, to realize how to do this problem is to realize that we have two different spring constants. So two different frequencies on both sides. We then say, well, we're going to calculate the period of each half of the oscillation, add it together to get the total period. Each pair will be different because it's a different spring constant, therefore different frequency. We remember the relationship between period and frequency and the relationship between frequency and the angular frequency. And also knowing that the angular frequency is defined as the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. So we calculate that out for omega 1, for omega 2, then we calculate T1, T2, divide both sides by 2 to get half the period and the other half the period put it together and we get the full period is 35 pi over 6 which is approximately 6 pi so the energy is 6 and that is how it's done.